everyone, and thank you so much, Peter. I'm just so disappointed that he didn't have his Stormtrooper outfit on. I think that would suit him, don't you? Uh, at least he brought his lightsaber. So that certainly has set the tone for what today is all going to be about, because we're going to hear lots of different opinions on this subject, the journey, what does the future hold? Um, and it's definitely a subject that I talk about a lot as a tech journalist. And it's a funny old topic, because it's one of those topics that half the time people are incredibly excited about, they can't wait to see what's in store for them. But then the other half of the time, it's very much the opinion that they don't quite know what's around the corner. There's a feeling of uncertainty and trepidation. And my mum used to always tell me the story that apparently when I started nursery school, I used to absolutely hate it to begin with. And every time I'd go in there, she realised the reason why I hated it is because I didn't know what was in store for that day. So we would all then decided that I'd go to nursery and I'd have to go up to the teacher at the beginning of the day and work out what they had planned. Unfortunately, when it comes to technology and the future, we don't really have that teacher figure who's able to tell us what's around the corner. But the more I sort of talk about this and write on the subject and look at how tech is disrupting different industries, the more I realise this, and that technology is shaped by people for people, okay? It's becoming more and more human-centric. It's not something that's sort of separate from us, that we're trying to keep up with the whole time. Instead, it's meant to be amplifying and anticipating our human capabilities. And if we really embrace these new technologies, then we can unleash human potential in our workforce. We free them up to be more creative, more agile and quick to respond to change. On top of that, I've noticed that the relationship between the businesses and the customer turns to something richer. It turns to something that looks a little bit more like a partnership. And this is because that you can anticipate what people's needs are and then meet them. And there's a great example which I use on my Google Calendar where it has a neat little AI feature that helps you sort of do other things that you want to do. Maybe it's learn a language. I use it to go to the gym. And by inputting how many times I want to go to the gym a week, um, the location of it, the time span, it then will find a schedule in my, in my diary that says I should go to the gym. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually force you to go to the gym, but that's a different thing that Google need to work on. But because of that, because it's anticipating my needs and responding to it, um, I have such a deeper connection with how I interact with this Google app and Google as a whole. So if we can harness the power of AI, of, of um, adaptive user interfaces, of big data, we can create these customer journeys that are so much richer that customers want to hang around more, they listen to you more, and they have a deeper connection with you. But as I sort of said, this is all about us creating the rules. We don't have to sort of be led by the neck by technology, struggling to keep up with, with what it's doing. Instead, we are creating it. And that's why days like today are so important, because it's a chance for us to all have a conversation about it, to discuss it, to work out the bits that really work for us and the bits that, you know, maybe don't work for us as much. So as it's a conversation, we would love you to get involved, um, both through networking, we've got lunch and drinks afterwards, um, but also we do have Wi-Fi, so please do connect onto the Wi-Fi. It is, it looks really long and big on this screen. It's not as scary as it looks. It's MAB 2020 Curve, um, and obviously we have a hashtag for today. So give us lots and lots of love on Twitter. The hashtag is hashtag MAB 2020, because it's all about the future. See what we did there? Um, and then also um, I can talk you through our morning agenda because it, let's face facts if I talk through the whole of the day uh, we'll forget it around lunchtime so we're going to start off with Mike Jones from Lloyd's Banking Group followed by Gemma Godfrey from Moolet who will be both giving two separate brilliant keynotes after that we have a panel discussion here on stage where both um, Mike and Gemma will join us 
as well as some representatives from the mortgage and estate agency industry. And then, you know, the important bit, we break for lunch around one and have lots and lots of lovely food. So let me introduce our first speaker. Mike Jones is Managing Director of Intermediaries and Speciality Brands for Lloyds Banking Group, who have been the winners of numerous MAB awards. Mike today will be here telling us where he sees the big opportunities are and also what types of organisations he feel will benefit the most from the changes that lie ahead. Please put your hands together for Mike Jones. Thank you. 